Hey there, Wendy here with Jazzy Doodle Designs, and today we're going to be working in Yoyuri Mouse by Makiko Inatoni. Tomi. Um, I'm doing a buddy color with Christine Tarant. I I can never say her name. Tarant. Um, she is fantastic. She now has an Instagram, so you'll have to check her out. I will put a link to her in the description box, but we're going to be doing this little guy, and I'm hoping by the time I, I don't know if this is going to be one or two parts, it kind of depends on how long it takes me to color it, but um, hopefully when I post it, I'll have her color along page so that we can take a look. Um, otherwise, I will post it up on Instagram when we're done, but... Um, my thoughts with this right now is kind of a lavender sage green kind of palette for this with some golden browns of course for our breads and whatnot um so i'm going to be using black widow pencils so let's go By request, I had someone ask if I could list all the pencils I used in the project ahead of time. So I did my best. There may be one or two that are a little off, whether I used them or didn't use them. And so I apologize if that does occur. But um, I did my best to list them out for you guys. Now, if you've never been to the channel before, welcome. And just a couple of housekeeping notes. My color alongs, I play back in two times speed. So if you want to see them in real time, you may want to slow it down on, on your playback settings by clicking on the gear cog and adjusting, um, you know, how fast it plays back. But I find that two times speed is really good for voiceovers and you people can watch the video and listen if they want. If they're following along, they can slow it down. So the other thing is I always have a talking girl in the top left hand corner or somewhere on the screen when I'm chatting. And that way, if I set something to music and you don't like the music, you can mute it and then pop back in so that you don't miss any of my snappy dialogue. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so anyway, now that the housekeeping notes are, are uh, taken care of, let's dive in and look at this stinking cute little mouse. I really love this page, and I'm really glad Christine kind of um, encouraged me to do this buddy color along because this is a, it's a pretty detailed page, and there's a lot of bits and bobs, as she puts it. And I really enjoyed both the buddy color, color with her, but also just coloring this. Now, I used Black Widow pencils, and I think they did well. Um, I don't know that they'll be my favorite pencils to use in this book, but I really wanted the color palette. I really wanted that soft, pale sage color that you see on the wall um, as one of my main colors. And I felt like uh, Black Widows really fit the bill. So, and they did work well. So anyway, um, I also wanted a very... All of the, the pictures I saw online had the darker wood, and I wanted something more like whitewashed wood and the pale green sage and lavender. That's kind of what I pictured here. And overall, I think it turned out really well. I probably would deepen some of the shadows on the bookcase and underneath the shelves just to add a little bit more uh, of the darker values. Otherwise, I'm real pleased with how it turned out. Now, I will set part of this to music just simply because, like, what all can I say about what I'm doing right now? <laughs> 
Um, sometimes techniques, uh, you know, I feel compelled to tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, other times it seems a little apparent to me. So we may just do a little chatting here. But overall, I'm wanting uh, some darker tones deep in the shadows of this bookcase and, you know, where there was um, like where the wood slats are in in the bookcase itself. And then the overall color is going to be a lighter color. And I start off with a, like a light, cool gray type of color. And then at the very end, I'm going to add another layer of a slightly mm, warmer tone, I think. I just felt like there wasn't enough uh, color, so to speak. But whenever you do a really busy picture like this, it's really important, in my opinion, to try and minimize the number of colors that you use on a page. I tried to stick with, it. if you looked at the list, there was quite a few pencils. But if you look at the, the colors themselves, we have greens, we have grays, and I don't really count your neutrals because neutrals, you can, you can do quite a few neutrals and, and get away with it. But as far as colors, we have our purple tones, our red violet tones, and then the green tones. And that's about it. Oh, and then the browns. So, you know, I don't have blue and orange and those kind of things. I tried very hard to make it all work with the colors that I used in, you know, throughout. And some of the ways that you can use that is you can use, take those same pencils and use them in different color combinations or in different strengths so that you might have like a light brown and then that same brown but deepened up with another brown or gray so that you have so your picture reads the same color but the but the value changes and by value I'm talking like the darkness of a color so if you think of grayscale right you have your really light almost white all the way up to black, right? So if the white is a zero and your black is a 10, you want some variety of values. So you don't want everything on your picture to be black and you don't want everything on your picture to be light, like the white. So that's what I mean by value. So you could have a green color like my wall there that might be a value of like one but then if I pull in um like a gray and take that same color and go over that gray I might be able to bump the value of that color to like a three or a four and that's going to add a little variety I hope I haven't just confused the crap out of you. Normally, it would be good to have <laughs> show you a scale and and things like that. If you want me to do a video on that, there are some good videos on the Internet, and I certainly am not a um, an expert in it, but I can give you some some of examples and I can explain it and show you the importance of it in terms of you know, examples and things to maybe help you understand that so that you can bring that concept into your coloring. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you want me to do. So I'm just, I'm basically going to make the table the same color as the, the hutch and, and the shelves. 
And then I'm going to bring in the warmer, more browny tones into the wood itself, like for the floor. And in the end, I, I end up keeping the chair slightly lighter than everything else. And you'll see that kind of at the end when I when I decide to add a color to the to the hutch and to the table and stuff. Did you guys have a good weekend? Who has like really big plans for um, St. Patrick's Day? Quite honestly, we don't really celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day in my family. When the boys were young, you know, we always did the dress in green. And one year, <laughs> oh, they'll probably kill me for telling the story, but one year, my boys are not, they were not picky eaters. They would eat pretty much anything and they were good eaters. And, but for one St. Patrick's Day, I decided to make cornbread or not cornbread, um, corned beef and sauerkraut. And the boys did not like sauerkraut. And I was like, well, you just got to eat it. Like, and they had never pushed back on me. So I was just like, what is your problem? <laughs> and, oh, they were, they were dang near in tears. They were young. They they're like seven and nine, you know, and they were just like, mom, we'll go to bed right now. We'll go to bed without supper. We don't care. You know, just let us, let us go. And, um, my husband's like, we'll put some mustard on it and maybe it'll be better. <laughs> Who eats mustard on sauerkraut, gross? But um, I guess maybe on a hot dog. I don't know. I don't really eat sauerkraut on hot dogs. It's not something that we um, we ever really made again. <laughs> and and the funny thing is, is they will both eat it now. Now I'm not sure that they're going to the store. And, um, okay, so I'm gonna pause my stupid story. Um, I decided I wanted wainscoting here. Is that how you say wainscoting? Wainscoting? Um, I think it's wainscoting. But, um, so anyway, I'm drawing my little lines. And, spoiler alert, at the end, I decided it didn't stand out enough. And so I do a double line and I use a darker gray. So... I just put two lines very close together, um, almost like a line and then enough space for another line in between. Does that make sense? Just for a little visual interest on that, that wall right there. And um, so you may want to do that right at this step. It's up to you. Feel free to go back and look at you know, the final picture and see if you like the looks of that. Um, but, um, and I kind of messed it up a little bit. <laughs> Don't look too close. But, um, you know, I just wanted something a little different there. But anyway, so let me know. Do you guys like sauerkraut? Do you like corned beef and cabbage? Do you, do you guys drink green beer? Do you make a big event of it? I, I don't know. It was just never a huge holiday for our family. And then once the boys were raised, uh, my husband and I don't do a single thing. <laughs> we don't even pinch each other if we don't wear green. So um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're kind of sticking the muds that way. But uh, I would be curious to see what you guys do because I know some people really enjoy all the random holidays. Now here what I did is I brought in some cool gray into your wood. I really like the 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 look of even on even when I do brown wood, I like to add a little gray in. I just think it adds um it kind of makes the wood look a little more weathered and I find it interesting. Now, overall, I want 
my pots and pans and such to look white. And so I'm using this gray tone to shadow them a little bit, shade them on the side, and then leave the rest white so that when you look at the picture, they read white. And so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just putting in, just with a light hand, some shadowy areas. And then I'm going to go in with, um, well, I start with the darker tones on the side and then blend them out with that lighter tone. Um, but just a little bit of shadowing here and there on your white. Now, this is what you do if you were coloring snow or anything white, is you want to use another color to indicate where the shadows are. And then when you look at it, it just, it reads white. Now I will go over it with a white prisma. Okay, Wendy, don't jump ahead. <laughs> And I'm trying very hard to use the pencils throughout the entire thing. <laughs> but you know me, I'm going to jump around a little bit. And I'm definitely going to go back over things uh, at the end. It's just the way I color. But I do try to do all the white dishes and whatnot here all at once. So I'm going to leave you to finish up the white dishes and I'll be back with you when we start coloring the flowers. Okay, let's grab our purple. Now this is gonna be the main purple that I use in this, and I'm just putting on the very first coat of purple on all the dishes. So all these dishes have these little flowery um, elements to them. Now I'm just going every other one of these little gingham squares. And I decided I wanted the jar itself to be purple as well. Now, I made a choice not to make my jars like glass. You could make these jars glass. You could add like a white Posca and put some highlights and stuff to make them look shiny and translucent. I just chose to make them a little more opaque. By not having the reflections, that kind of lends 
itself to saying that they're more opaque and not shiny glass. And I just kind of want to balance out the purple throughout the page. So I decided that this bird needed to maybe have some purple in it as well. And then on the left hand side, I opted to use jam in the sandwich for that reason. Now technically it kind of looks like it should be peanut butter, but I chose to color it as jam just to balance out the page. Now, like a lot of times, I don't make these decisions till later in the picture. Now, in this basket, in between where each one of the weaves um, overlap each other, there's going to be shadows. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm coloring in the shadows. And this is going to make this basket look a little more dimensional. And I'm basically just making a little mark to the right and to the left. I tried to zoom in a little bit so that you could really see what I was doing. And here I'm just making, once again, where there would be kind of some shadows in between each one of these um, coils, I guess is what they're called. And then I'll go over it with our colors. Now I'm going to do the same thing for each of the wicker baskets, essentially exactly the same. Just adding in those darker spots where there would be shadows, where those um, basket weaves overlap. Now each basket is slightly different. This one on the side, you can see where the artist did not draw all the weaves in. So I'm going to render that piece to the right there just lighter. So I don't want to put any of my gray there. Or charcoal, I guess it's called. Okay, so now we're getting into the overall green tone of this basket. Now this is kind of my shadowy. I want the actual, this is kind of the main color of the basket, I think. Now as I go over that charcoal, you will see that it still is green, but it's definitely darker. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. So I really zoomed in and I lost the card, but I'm using the same color. But you can see as I go over that charcoal, how it, it does the shading for me, but it still looks green, right? Now I am choosing not to go over the, um, the, the little cross pieces at this point. I hadn't quite made up my mind if I wanted to bring in like a, a tan or something like that. Or if I was going to use a lighter green. Or you could even use a darker green. I mean, there is no wrong way to do these because these baskets come in all different varieties of color. So I'm essentially doing the exact same thing on the other baskets. Now, as I color this one, as I go to the right, I'm going to lighten my pressure up a little bit. Not that I'm pressing hard right now, let's say maybe a two or three, but now I'm doing more like a one or a two. And you can see how that left that lighter look.
and then the third basket as well. Now as I get back in the bookcase that's going to be darker so you can apply a touch more pressure. You don't want to be bearing down. You want to make sure you can still add more layers. And then I switch to this forest green and I go over just like we did with the charcoal. I'm going to go over those dark spots, those shadow areas. And this just even deepens those shadows, but it still helps me maintain the overall read of green as opposed to, you know, black shadows. It just looks like the natural green, you know, it looks, <laughs> oh, Wendy, words are tough. Um, I feel like the the lighter green, that olive green, it just looks like what it would look like if it was in shadow. That is my intention anyway. Now, you guys can decide if I pulled it off. <laughs> I really like the olive tones with the which with the sage green of the wall. I think these are nice green tones together. And you can see now by adding that forest on the right hand basket and then not pulling it into the right hand side there. I just didn't color that at all. We're starting to get some some contrast of value which I think makes things look more interesting. Okay, now with a slightly lighter green, I'm basically going over everything that I've colored. Now, this apple has a brightness, brightness, bright, Wendy. Okay, the apple has a brightness to it that really, um, well, brightened it up a lot. If I could pick all the colors, I would have picked a slightly lighter olive green with a little less of the yellow in it. But this is what I had, and so you work with what you've got. I don't think it looks bad. I just it does brighten it a little more than I would like. Okay, so let's start working on our little berries here. Now, I know a lot of times people get wound up with, well, what kind of berry is it and whatever. In this case, I really didn't. I just, I wanted purple berries. <laughs> And so I didn't try and figure out, are these blueberries, are they cranberries, are they, you know, gooseberries? I didn't do any of that. I colored them the color I wanted because I wanted the purple tones. Same with whatever this is. I don't know what this is. They could be bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I don't know if they're a ristra. I don't know if it's bananas. I don't know, but I wanted them purple, so I colored them purple. Um, Dee Dee Wilkinson once said, you are the boss of your coloring book. <laughs> and I thought that line was so funny because, yeah, you're the boss of your own coloring book. So make it whatever color you want. And for me, like I said, I really wanted my, my elements to be cohesive because it is such a busy page. Now, we could have colored these any color we wanted. And maybe, maybe you like those kind of pictures where there's a lot of different colors on a page. Then, by all means, color these all different. And... You know, I'm not saying 
that you have to color this way. I'm not saying that my way is the best way. I'm going to flash up Christine's at the end of, um, it'll probably be at the second, like when I finish them both, I will show you hers. Or I might even do it at the intro of this one. I haven't decided, but hers is beautifully done. But it's a very different look than mine. And she uses a lot of those richer browns. But she too kind of limits her color choice. Not quite as, as much as I did. But there is no denying that her page is beautiful. And so it's just different. And, and different is okay, guys. Like, make your art your own. Make it what makes your heart smile. Because, <laughs> there I am flinging pencils, um, because that's where the joy is. And I try and challenge myself because I am one of those people that I do like a lot of colors on a page and tend to think more is more. <laughs> and so I'm trying to teach myself that oftentimes less is more. But, you know, art is so subjective and it's really, it's whatever you like. So do what you like. Now I'm just adding a very touch of this color. I just thought it added a little interest and I was using it here just to drop in the shadows for those, the little fluted um, skirting on the, oh, excuse me, it's Monday and I'm sleepy. I just think this, this color is beautiful and I just really liked it. You know, you will, you will find at the end that I do go over some of this stuff, <laughs> but, um, same with these things. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. So I just colored them colors that I wanted, not really thinking, well, you know, what are these? Cause honestly, I literally have zero, zero idea what they are. So I just kind of colored them these green and brown tones that I wanted. Now I used that Casper and I decided that it, it didn't have enough color. That white was just, it was too white. So I bumped it up to the next one, which is milk, which definitely, <laughs> I think it's funny that milk is pretty much a yellow color. Um, but, um, I like that a lot better. So that's why you see that. So you could skip the whole Casper step if you wanted to. I don't even know what those are hanging from. They look like they're just like floating in the air. But. And then with these breads, make the breads whatever color you like. Do you like your toast light? Then color them light. If you like your toast a richer color, then uh, by all means color it you know, whatever color toast you want. You ever seen those Facebook things where they're like, which toast is the perfect toast? And there's like 10 pieces. Oh, I'm so sorry. There are like 10 pieces of toast, of like black all the way to like, it looks like um, bread. <laughs> looks like, you know, just warm bread. Um, and then you, you're supposed to put your number in of what you find perfect toast to be. That's what this reminds me of. 
color your bread the perfect bread color. Because if you look, Christina colored her bread a whole lot lighter than I colored mine. Mine I cooked it a little too long, I think. <laughs> Left it in the oven longer. And quite honestly, I was never really happy with how the seeds came out. I just could not make my brain figure out what color those seeds should be. I tried using a cream Posca and that's kind of, and then I went over it with a, another colored pencil because I wasn't really happy with the, the yellowish look of the cream, but the white was too white and I didn't want it gray. And when I tried to pick like that leather color, it just really didn't work. I probably should have left them just like they are right now, <laughs> but whatever. You know, this bread I decided to color, color much darker. And I really like how this bread turned out. Now I realize I missed that little piece, so I went back, and that's just Huntsman. And whatever that is, I just made it dark. So I'm just deepening it up a little bit with this charcoal. I also wanted the brown to, to be a little more of that. I don't know what kind of bread that is. Is it rye bread that's this color? That's kind of like a grayish brown? I don't know. But I, I wanted a little bit more of the grayish color in it. Now here's the problem with zooming in because then I forget that I'm zoomed in and you get a nice um, close up, but then I get off screen here. So my apologies. And there is a little segment here and I will have to see what it is. I, um, there's a little segment coming up where I, I'm coloring something off camera and I think it might be the cutting board. And I really apologize. Everything is completely off screen. So I took it out because I didn't think it was very helpful. Okay, so I chose to color these as almost like acorns maybe. Not exactly sure what they are. They could be jars. I don't know. But you just want a little variation of your different browns there. The mahogany. I wanted the little top or the, the caps to be a little darker. But I am flicking some of it down into it. And then just adding our darkest shade. And I'm going to run it right along that little rim. Do you see how that added some depth there? And then I'm going to overall deepen the overall color of these. Then going over everything with the lighter tone. And I'm using similar colors. So you'll notice that all the browns tend to have this leather color. I use Huntsman a lot. Um, I feel like it adds a lot of cohesion to your page if you do that. So here, this little leather purse, I'm just going in 
and using the exact same colors that I used for those acorns up there, I'm just kind of shading in one side of that purse a little bit more than the other. And using this Huntsman to kind of deepen it up. I personally like the look of that when it's significantly darker there and then gets lighter. I just think it it's interesting when when it's like that with the variations. Reiterating again, not the only way, not quote unquote the best way, just what I find interesting and what I like visually. So here I'm just doing the toast and the bread, just like I did over there on that side. Now I chose to make the edges of my bread quite a bit darker. You could leave them just this color if you wanted. So I'm going to finish up with the toast and we'll move on to the mouse. I'm going to set you to music and I'll be back with you in a bit. Okay, let's get our young man dressed, shall we? Now, one thing I will say is, I don't know what I was thinking here. You want to add a little bit of a curve down to your stripe. This makes the stripe look like it's going straight off the shorts. Curve it down just a touch to go with the fabric. 
um, instead of being more just straight. I hope that makes sense. I wish I could sketch on here, but I really can't. So I like the visual interest that the stripes have. Now you could make these plaid, you could make them polka dotted, you could, you can color them all in plain if you want. I really like the stripes, but like I said, especially they're on the leg, they need, the stripes need to have a little bit of a curve to them to look a little more the way they should. <laughs> Okay, hopefully you saw that I tried to highlight these little shoes. They're such small little things. Okay, next up is our little jar here. We're going to go in with the R leaf green. Now you could also use that other green that we used on the basket. They're very similar that olive green. I just happen to grab this one. Now I will go in and finish that towel, but I decided I wanted to add a little bit of this green to those. I don't know if they're gourds or, or what down there at the bottom. But I'm just kind of blending those two colors together. Now I'm <laughs> I'm off on the books. So with these books I wanted to have some unity to them as well. I thought about doing them different colors. Now I'm kind of using this Huntsman as my shadowy layer and then this olive brown is going to be the overall color of the book. You see how that looks kind of two-toned now? Now I decided, hey I know, maybe I should, um, I decided I wanted them darker is what I did here. But this one little book there, I decided I wanted to do green. And and then once I got it green, I was like, no, I think they should all be brown. So you'll see me kind of go back over it. So these aren't necessarily mistakes. They're just changes. I mean, that's the way I want you guys to look at things like even, even artists that you like, they make changes. Now you may never even know that they've done this, but I promise you, we all pick colors and then edit and change our mind and and change how we do things. So don't be afraid to do that in your own coloring. Now here I'm just adding some some shadowing to the bottom of this towel and to the sides of this jug. Working my way up that towel. And then adding in our lightest color. Now once again, these are the same colors I used in the basket, in the shorts, and you know, so there is some continuity there. Gave that purse a little green button as well. <laughs> a little opener, whatever those are called. Okay, so at this point I decided I wanted to introduce another color. So I picked this red-violet color. Now I chose this because it is kind of in the purple family, 
but it's completely different. Now I could have picked a blue, I could have picked a yellow, an orange, I mean really the sky's the limit. So there's no right or wrong way. Um, I just thought that this would look good together. So I'm bringing it in to add to some of these other elements. Just for a little visual interest. Personally, I think if you keep a picture to three to five colors, now not counting in skin tones, not counting maybe your neutrals, I think that that's a good rule of thumb. Now, especially early on in my coloring career, which I've been doing art for over 20 years, but as far as adult coloring, it's really only been in the last year that I've done this. Last year, um, I started the channel in January, and that's about when I started adult coloring. I had done it for maybe a month prior to it. So I wanted to kind of document my journey and just share whatever knowledge that I have with you guys. And I absolutely love doing this. Um, it's so much fun. I really wish that more of these were live so that I could have interaction with you. But, um, but I really do love it. I don't really feel like I would have had much to contribute if I didn't have the 20 years of card making and journaling, um, you know, like mixed media journaling and things like that. So I have colored stamps and different things. I've used a lot of Copics. Um, I was just a little impatient about colored pencil. <laughs> so as I get older, I'm trying to be a little more patient. Y'all see, see me failing at that on a regular basis, but hey, let's not talk about that, huh? <laughs> but I do feel like that all contributes to maybe some of my quote unquote success in, in creating nice pages, pages that I can be happy with. Um, maybe y'all look at them and go, okay, Wendy, <laughs> whatevs. But um, I do, I do feel like all of that experience kind of builds on each other. So I never want someone, the only reason I'm saying all this, I'm blathering on. <laughs> and you're like, what's the point? The point is, is that I wouldn't want someone to hear that I've only been coloring for a year and think, why doesn't my coloring look like this coloring? Or why can't I choose colors or whatever? First of all, I struggle with all of those same things that you do. Um, but second of all, I have a lot of experience to build on, even if it isn't in specifically colored pencil. Using a Copic and using a colored pencil are very similar. You have to figure out the medium, but as far as the color choices and um, design layout and things like that, they're all they're all intermingled. And so, so yeah, that's the only reason I say that. And this feels like a really awkward segment because I don't want to feel like I don't want you to think I'm thinking. Well, I'm fantastic. I don't feel that. Every picture I do, I look at critically and I see how can I improve and I look at other people's work and just like you, I compare. I try not to. My rule is I only compare with myself. So I do look at the pages that I colored a year ago and I ask myself, am I making better color choices? Am I coloring smoother? Am I, um, you know, whatever, whatever the arena is, whatever technique I'm using, I'm always challenging myself because I can't look at somebody that's been coloring, adult coloring for 20 years and think I can do what they can do. Some people just have crazy good talent, but some people put in the top, most people, most people put in the time, 
even the really talented people. Some of us are better innately with color choice. For some, it comes really easy. Mine is a mix. Sometimes I feel like I am good with color, but I also did carpet dyeing. <laughs> I know it's a real thing, but imagine if you had a bleach spot and you just got brand new carpet. You don't want to replace all that carpet and you don't necessarily want to cut a patch and, and maybe you don't have carpet to replace it. I did carpet dyeing, so you have to understand how color works to do that, to be able to match those colors exactly. Um, so these are, you know, I worked with rugs and I know how to choose colors to match them and to uh, repair them when you don't have the exact same wool that what that's in those rugs. And so sometimes we would dye wool to create, uh, you know, the exact match. All of that stuff plays into my color choice making. But that being said, I look at Christine and her picture is just beautiful. I love her color choices and they're completely different than mine. So all of this to say, allow yourself to grow, challenge yourself, do color challenges, do um, like go on Pinterest and pick out a color palette and challenge yourself to color that picture using only those colors and you will improve. Color along with various artists on YouTube. You will improve because I promise you, you will pick up some things from one person, other things from another person, and we're all a big community. I watch color alongs. I watch other people's challenge, um, channels, and I might color completely differently than they do, but I might pick up on one little tip or one little trick that I can incorporate into my work. So I encourage you, but the biggest, you will notice the biggest growth if you literally color more. And if you're the kind of colorist that's just, you want to put some color on paper and um, you don't want to think about it and you don't care and you're just doing it for mental health, you're probably not watching my channel. You're probably not watching the other YouTube channels. And that is perfectly okay as well. And just know... I just posted this on my Facebook because I saw it today. Um, what is it? Let me let me look it up so I can tell you exactly. Okay, so is it just me? I guess I didn't share it. I have no idea how to find it now. But it was something along the lines of like Michelangelo only created like only 25 of his artworks are considered masterpieces but he created like, I don't know, 400 or a thousand, something like that. And the whole idea is that his, uh, that doesn't mean that his other paintings weren't good, but it, those other paintings help him get the masterpiece. So not all of our coloring pages are going to be masterpieces. I know mine aren't. I have a few that I've been really proud of. And then I have some that I'm like, well, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> and that's about all I can say about it because, you know, maybe they didn't turn out the way I wanted. But just dive in, guys, and have a good time. It's so hard to do because we spend money on these books and we're so afraid of ruining them. And I know some people hate when their pages buckle and they get little crinkles. I don't know. That kind of stuff doesn't bother me too much because I just want to enjoy and play and have fun. 
and water mediums are sometimes a lot of fun. Now, each to their own, you know, you might come to my house and find my housekeeping skills are a little lacking too. <laughs> but you know, you only have so much time in the day and I can either vacuum or color. And you guys, I took one for the team and I opted to color. <laughs> Is anyone buying any of this? Oh, it is true, though. I probably do need to vacuum. <laughs> but, you know, I just got a new coloring book, so we'll see if, if the vacuuming happens. Now, don't get me wrong. My house isn't gross. I don't have bugs. I don't have dirty dishes lying around or, or whatever. Um, but, yeah. Um, you just put a get well soon card up on your mantle. That way if someone stops by and your house is a wreck, they think it's because you were sick. <laughs> I saw that. I also saw one that said, um, you know, dust is just made up of people's skin molecules and stuff. And I don't want to get rid of... <laughs> somebody I might know or something stupid like that and somebody says I dusted once and it came back I'm not falling for that again now that one I can get behind I thought that was pretty hilarious but my house is not I don't know it's lived in it, it's funny and you Way back in the day when my boys were young, I ran a house cleaning company and I went to some of these houses and every single thing is immaculate and they have white furniture and they have, you know, these, these $50,000 rugs and everything in their house looks like a museum and I'm thinking, you know, they walk in and it's like... Um, I don't know. There's no living in a house like that. Now, if your house looks like that, kudos to you. And you know, it's just because I'm, you know, I don't keep my house that way. <laughs> so, uh, jealousy, I guess is what I'm saying. No, I don't know. They just, they made me feel like what happens in this house? Like to me, a house should be comfortable whatever that is now i'm all about having a room that looks like that and then like a family room where all the fun and action happens that makes sense to me because then you have company and they're not like competing with your monopoly game or you know your kids is homework or something but i i just have a house that we live in and you guys are probably picturing some disaster area. It's not a disaster area, but at the same time, um, it's not immaculate. My purse is on the table. Um, you know, there's dog toys on the floor. I, you know, Ellie can be a little remiss about putting her toys away. <laughs> but I don't... I don't know. I want people to come over and, and feel comfortable sitting sitting on my couch and, and putting their feet up, right? And getting comfy to watch a movie, not like sitting on the edge of the seat afraid that you might smudge their pristine white couch. But I don't know. Like I said, maybe I'm just jealous because... <laughs> You know, my house doesn't look like that, but, um, and I always found it really interesting that we literally cleaned that house every week and it was spotless. Like her trash was cleaner than things in my house. Um, but she was also very, I don't know, she didn't seem happy. She seemed uptight all the time and, and like worried about you know, it, 
you know what I'm talking about. Like, let's say that you're having a drink with her and you're sitting at the table. The minute your glass is empty, it's whisked away by her and like washed and dried and put away. Not even like washed and stuck in the sink, but like washed, dried, put away. And you're like, okay, um, I thought we were chatting, <laughs> you know? I don't know. That's just not how I live my life. And this is not me trying to judge her. Like, you know, in fact, I never gave it a whole lot of peace of mind. You know, it's not like I lose sleep over that lady. It's just, to me, it just felt like, are you enjoying your life or are you just worried that I might judge you for having a, a glass on your table? See, this is what happens when you set me loose and say, we want you to talk on your videos, Wendy. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get, so be careful. Be careful of what you ask for. Is that what they, the saying is? Be careful what you wish for. Now here, you know, I'm just deepening up my shadows. Looking at the picture all done, I probably could have done a little more of this just to add a little more volume. I'll try and get my mind back on track. At this point, we've got mm, maybe a couple of things like the little bird needs to be colored, which I do at the very end, and then that pot up at the top. But for the most part, at this point, I'm tidying things up. I'm adding color where I feel I need color. Adding value where I feel like I need value. Um, smoothing things, blending things. Just overall evaluation of the picture of us as a whole. Right? So that's kind of what I'm doing here. You know, I, I look over and I go, oh, I missed the picture frame. Now, I know, for those of you that follow the channel, you're just shocked, shocked that I would miss something. To those of you just tuning in, I always miss something. I always color a cat and leave one leg uncolored, mainly so that I have to pull out and try and remember what the color combination is later. It's like a personal challenge to myself. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, the nice thing is, is that when I voice over, I try and point these things out to you so that you don't have to do the same. But, yeah, I'm just kind of looking at everything, making some evaluations. Decided I wanted a little more color in that, that picture frame. Realized I had an entire pot that wasn't colored. Maybe I should do something about that. <laughs> so I decided to, the reason I chose this color is I'm trying to tie in the wood on the floor and and balance it out because I've got these same colors in those acorns and those boxes and this brings that brown over to the other side. And with my other dishes being white, I felt like it really needed color. And I thought about doing green. The problem with green is, is I've got that little leaf right next to it. And I felt like it would all blend together. So that's how I came to what color to color the pot. Here I'm just deepening up the shadows on the side. When you do this, it, it makes them look a little more 3D. So it makes that pot look like it curves a little bit. Here I'm just adding a little darkness to that stem. It was colored with like the green, but adding a little touch of brown, I think adds a little visual interest See, once again, you know, touching up the purse, touching up the shadows, realizing that I didn't color the pencil, so I'm going to have to do that. 
kind of deepening up those shadows on the cutting board. Just smoothing the blends. That cutting board was looking a little grainy to me. Now, I made a conscious decision that I wasn't going to use the blending stick for uh, anything. Now here I'm showing you that I put in those second lines for the wainscoting and I do feel like this really made a big difference having the two lines and having those um, be darker. But just having those two lines I personally felt made a big difference. Now overall I felt like the white wasn't really doing, it wasn't really white but that gray tone wasn't really doing it for me. And I decided to go ahead and bring in this brown fog, which is actually a pretty light color. Um, but you can see the tonal change. And that's kind of what it is. It's not a humongous change in terms of like when you look at it, it still looks light, but instead of looking like whiter wood, I felt like that that color that is on there right now had a little bit of a yellow quality because it was picking up a lot of the green tones and I just, I didn't really like it. So that's why I'm going over everything. Now, I will say this entire coloring of the hutch and everything, I did put it three, three times speed. So no, I'm not coloring it that fast, but I feel like if you're just watching this, um, it's a lot to just sit and watch me color just a base coat. I'm not doing anything fancy schmancy. I'm just literally going over everything. So that's why I sped that up. But I did want you to know so that because sometimes when you watch things that are sped up, you think, wow, I wish I could color that fast or whatever. And I do wish I could color this fast, but I want you to know what real time looks like. Now, this video is about an hour and a half long and, you know, most of it is at two times speed. I can tell you it took me longer than three hours. What you don't see on my videos is me pausing and thinking and looking up on my chart and trying to find the pencil and all of that. <laughs> so it does take me longer than three hours. and. I splice out unnecessary little things. Um, like I said, like me, you know, pausing to adjust my computer for whatever I'm watching. Now, now with, I'm using white Prisma. I like white Prisma on my artwork more than I like other white colored pencils but I just go over everything with white. It does make a difference. It's subtle. You can kind of see it there as I do each of those little planks. Um, but I just am trying to add a little bit of white to all of those white things so that they don't look uncolored because in a picture you can't necessarily tell, but sometimes in person you will see a textural difference if it's not actually colored, if you just leave it white uncolored. Now I just kind of went over the edge a little bit um, and so I tidied that up before I colored that white. Now there's a lot you could do with this. You could go in with Posca, you could put highlights, you could, um, you could add some glitter. I thought about putting a little bit of white Posca and going over like that rye bread or whatever that darker bread is. Because you know, to depict like flour, um, 
but in the end, some sometimes when I colored pages, I just feel like I don't want the paint look. And then other times, like I recently did one in the Mino Risa Dirch Africa book. If you watch the one, the sunset with the island signs, I use a ridiculous amount of white Posca and colored Posca pens and love how it turned out. But then sometimes I just don't want it. Now here I, I'm just deepening up some of the purples with this grape tone. Just bringing in a little more oomph in the darker areas. This is not necessary. Um, I also just went over that entire, if you remember, we used kind of that, whatever it was, washed gray, grape or something like that. Um, it was kind of a gray purple. I just decided I wanted more of the purple purple. It's an official color, purple purple. just going into the darker spots just adding just a tiny pops of color in each of the berries in each of the flowers I think I do it on the the jam even though that jam is kind of that reddish color I had a little purple in not over the entire thing just here and there to give it some visual interest I colored the, the pencil purple. I decided to bring my phone into the picture. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just want to darken up. Um, I'm, I'm going to use a couple of colors, but kind of darken up the corners of this picture. I just felt like it was a t it was too one toned. So do as little or as much of this as you would like. Now, once again, bringing in my darkest brown that I use this Huntsman, and I'm just kind of darkening up the nuts the bread, uh, the little mouse, all the different things. Now you certainly don't have to do this. Put my bread back in the oven for a bit. <laughs> I just like a nice contrast of dark and light. I think I mentioned this earlier, but looking at the page as a whole, one of the things I would probably do is darken up the shadows in the bookcase because once I put all of these dark bits in, it so bef before I had these darker bits like the the space and 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 this huntsman and stuff like that my value in my bookcase was darker and it looked in proportion but what i didn't account for was now that i deepened up some of the other things and made them darker now based on perspective you know it's like compare and contrast if you look at something that's gray and you put it right next to something black, let's say it's a light gray, you put it next to black, it's going to look really white. But if you take that same light gray and you put it right next to white, it's going to look a lot darker gray. And that's exactly what happened here is that I had that bookcase darker in my shadows in proportion to how light the rest of the page was. But then by deepening up 
my mouse and the pot and the baskets and and the wood and everything around it by perspective or I don't think that's the word I'm looking for proportionally um, now the bookcase isn't as dark so you may want to go back in and darken it up now here I I should have I don't know what I should have done I really struggled with these stupid seeds um, but I definitely didn't like this and I didn't really like the Posca over over the bread so I was using cream here it kind of looks like a light um, yellow but it was technically cream and um, yeah I just wasn't a fan so here I'm just going in with that that lightest gray and another gray and just adding a little bit of shading to the bird so he doesn't look un uncolored. Sorry that I'm a little off on the camera here. Now you could color this. You could add um, white Posca to the, the little white blobs of snow or whatever. See, even with his feet and his beak, I didn't want to introduce like an orange or something. So I just colored it black. And I think that works fine. Birds have that. Darkening up the eyes. The nose. Same with our little mouse here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this midnight. And I am going to shade almost everything. So going in and, and laying in a shadow here, adding more depth to the basket, adding a little more depth to the sides of the pots. Now you can choose or not whether or not you like this look. It's kind of a stylized look. I personally like it. You don't necessarily have to do it with black. Um, you could do, you know, how we did the forest on, on, the, on the basket. You could do that as well. And I'm not doing all of the ribs on the dark. Um, I don't think. Maybe I do. No, I don't think so. Because um, sometimes less is more. If you deepen them on one edge, it has more of an impact. So just deepening up that shadow there where the bread kind of tucks in. Just there on the gourds, just adding a little bit. So when you do this, if you choose to do this step, use a very light hand. I am barely laying any color down because this is black. So it's really it's going to make a difference and you can see on this pot it adds quite a bit of difference so be gentle don't go in gangbusters or it will very rapidly take over your piece I do wish I would have shaded a little bit under that shelf um, maybe not with the black, maybe with like a darker gray, but I do wish I would have done that. I guess it's not too late, but I've already posted this to Instagram <laughs> and I'm already uploading this video, obviously. Uh, so at this point it is what it is, but I'm letting you know because it is something that when I look at, I wish I would have done. But I do feel like this step made a difference in the overall look of this piece. 
Like look at this little plant before and after. Like back it up 10 seconds and take a look. Yep, I wish I would have just used this midnight and went in to the bookcase as well. Maybe I'll do a video on that, like going into finished pieces and just what would I do to quote unquote improve them. Because some might argue that this doesn't improve them at all. But anyway, we're nearing the end. I'm going to finish touching this up. As always, I appreciate you popping in. And please, 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 please subscribe to the channel. Number one, it alerts you whenever I have done a new video. It is 100% free. Um, I had someone that was confused about that. Memberships usually have payments. I don't have any membership on the channel at this point. Um, that's usually for additional content, but if you subscribe, you don't get, you can get as many notifications as you want. So that's a separate step, but subscribe to the channel. Then when you go on YouTube, when I post a new video, it'll pop up and let you know I created one. Uh, that's the benefit to you. The benefit to me is that YouTube then says, oh, people like this content, so I'll show it to more people. So I uh, would love if you would do that and hit the like button on your way out. And until the next time, take care. Thank you for watching another video from Jazzy Doodle Designs. If you enjoy adult coloring content, please consider subscribing. You can now find me on Instagram and Facebook as well. I welcome all comments and suggestions. Don't forget to like the video before you go. And until next time, take care.